Um, I'm going to show you a little bit about Canvas. Um, in order to log into Canvas, you'll want to go to rushuniversity.instructure.com. And when you get to that page, it's going to ask you for your Rush email address and your Rush password. So that's the same password that you use to get into uh, your email and other Rush services. When you get logged in, you're going to land on uh, this dashboard page. Um, this should show any courses that you were enrolled in. Uh, if you are looking for your courses before the course start date, they probably won't show up yet until the actual course start date. Um, take a look around, get to know some things in here. Um, and then I recommend looking under the account button here. There's a couple things that I want to show you guys. Um, first, take a look at the notifications. Um, you'll see here uh, all of the notification settings. I have all of mine turned off, but the defaults for you will look very different. Um, these are all the notifications that you'll get either through email or if you have the Canvas app on your phone, you can do it that way. Uh, you can even put in your uh, phone number and get text messages. So I would recommend playing around with it, um, see how the notifications work, uh, see if you know maybe you're getting a little bit too many notifications or not enough. Just take a look at these settings. Uh, the only thing that you have to do is hover over this little icon here, and you can either set it to notify immediately, which means that you're going to get um, an email notification immediately, um, and you'll also get a push notification on your Canvas app. Uh, the daily summary, that will send out a daily notification to this email address, um, and then the weekly summary means that you'll just get that that email once per week. Uh, and then if you turn the notifications off, that means that you won't get any notifications to this email address right here regarding the due date uh, for, for assignments. And if you hover over these activities, um, it will show you a little bit more about what this is about. So this late grading one, it says that um, this is for instructors only. Uh, but like for discussions, for example, it says new discussion topic in your course. So this would notify you that there's a new discussion topic that's been made available to you. Um, from there, take a look under the profile page. And uh, I would recommend just looking at your profile. By default, there shouldn't be anything in here. But if you do want to add some things, you can click on edit profile here. Uh, you could put any web links in here if you wanted to or add a biography. Um, I also recommend looking under the settings page here. This is where you can add another email address if you want to. So this could be a personal email address. So besides getting, um, besides getting the email to your Rush email address, you'll also get the, you also can get an email to your um, personal email address if you'd prefer that option. Um, you can also click here and you can add a phone number if you want. So that way you get text message notifications. Um, the other thing that I would recommend looking at is clicking the edit settings button here. You can select your pronouns if you want to. You can even change the language or you can change the time zone. Um, and uh, there's a couple of other options on this page, but I won't go into them from, for now. Uh, the other thing that you might find helpful is this QR for uh, mobile login page um, is what this does is this generates one of those QR codes and it will allow you to log in automatically on your phone using the Canvas app without having to enter your username and password. This will basically, you just scan the QR code and it automatically logs you in. So that might save you some time rather than having to type in your your uh, email address and your password on your phone. So just wanted to let you know that it's there. Um, from there, um, I recommend taking a look at the, let's go back into the dashboard page here. Um, just a couple of other things. You can see that I'm enrolled in two courses here. These are called tiles. And uh, in these tiles, you could change the color of them if you wanted to. Uh, and you can also like move them around. So if you have more than just two courses here, you could like move them in different orders. Um, you can also take a look here at the discussions. 
So you can see here that I have one new discussion uh, and this would also um, bring me to my assignments page for this course. And then this one here looks like that takes me to the announcements page for that course. Um, if you are enrolled in courses that are not showing up on this dashboard, take a look at the courses page and click on all courses here. And this should show any course that you're enrolled in, even if it's a hidden course, it will probably show up here at the bottom and it'll say that the course, it'll say no for published, meaning that your instructor hasn't published it yet. And from there, take a look at the calendar. This is a calendar that's built into Canvas that is automatically populated with dates that are associated to specific items in your course. So you can see here that this is red color, meaning it's from this sample course. And this is uh, telling me that there is an introduction discussion form that's due at that date. Um, and then this one here, uh, I created myself and um, this one is just telling me to start working on the paper. I can create another calendar event if I want to by just clicking this plus button. So paper due tomorrow and it's just like an Outlook calendar, or Google calendar, or anything like that. And you can add it to your own uh, personal calendar within Canvas here and then you just click submit and it shows up here. Um, any course that you're enrolled in, it should automatically populate. If I go back here, there's some more things here that populated from this sample course. And it looks like that's about it for now. Um, you can also click this calendar feed button, which will allow you to uh, upload this calendar into like the calendar on your phone or Outlook or something like that, it, it should automatically sync up. So give that a try if you're interested in um, having that calendar somewhere else. Uh, the inbox feature here that's on the left side, um, this is basically an email inbox that's built into Canvas. This is how your instructors will contact you. It's also how any other students in your course, um, any of your classmates will, will be able to contact you. So you can send messages from within the course or you can just start sending the message from here. Uh, if I need to send a message, I can just click compose a new message and then I will select the course and I'll go to the sample course and then I can pull up a list of the teacher. So let's say that I want to email uh, the teacher Okay, and then I can go ahead and send that. And so my teacher, Bronca, she's gonna get this late assignment message just like she would uh, through an email. And if uh, your teacher responds to you, it'll show up here just like it would, would in an email. And if I click on this here, you can see that this is um, a message that uh, Bonnie had sent me previously. So you can delete that if you want to as well. The history page here, I think is also very useful. Uh, this will allow you to quickly jump to previous locations within Canvas. So you can see here that on May 19th at 9.19 a.m., I was in the sandbox course in the week two discussion. So it's just a quick way to bounce between different areas, like especially if you're working in between courses, it would allow you to uh, jump into another course without having to like navigate through three or four different pages. So if I just wanted to quickly go back to this week two discussion, I could click on that here. Um, and from there, take a look at the help menu. Uh, there are some Canvas guides in here. There's some information about how to use Canvas, um, all that good stuff. So just take a look at it here. This has everything you could possibly think of. Uh, there's also some other rush specific links in here and uh, at some point we'll be adding more links here. Okay, in this next section, we are, are going to go over your course, um, some features and some how to's. And again, every time you log into your Rush University Canvas account, you're gonna go into this dashboard. This is where you're gonna find a listing of all of your courses. You'll have a tile. Right now, I'm only enrolled in one course, so I only have one tile in here. 
And if I click on the tile, it's going to take me directly into my course. And in this left um, area right here, this is your course menu bar. Each of your courses, you will always have access to the home page, syllabus, and grades and modules. Uh, the discussions and assignments are to the discretion of your faculty if they choose to um, show you those tabs or not. Otherwise, you will find discussions and assignments in your module. And if we go over here to the right, if you click on uh, View Course Stream, it's going to give you an overview of all the recent activity in the course itself. So right now there is some activity in um, my messages. I have an inbox message that I have not read. That is what these little green dots mean. So in this case, I have a discussion that I have not read. Um, each of these will link you directly into that discussion. So if you click on it, it'll take you, for instance, to the sample discussion course. And I can go ahead and read that discussion post that I did not read. Um, you can also remove all of these items if you click on the X right here. So each of these you can expand and it'll show you some more detail regarding the most recent activity for each of these items. And the next thing is there is a button here for the course calendar. So if you click on it, it's going to directly take you into this tab right here into your global navigation. And this is where um, you'll have information specific to your course. And right now, there are it says that there are no events uh, for this course. And then if we move on, you can also click on here. Um, and you can access your course notifications. So for instance, for this particular course, I want to make sure that I get a notification for um, new discussion topics in the course. So I go ahead and hover over, and it'll, it'll give me some options to either notify immediately, a daily summary, weekly summary, or no notifications at all. So you can set this for this particular course, um, any of these setting features down here. And in this little section here, this will give me a to-do list of anything that's coming up to do for the course, any assignments, quizzes, so forth. Right now I have nothing to do. Um, and also it'll show me my groups that I am enrolled in for the course. So for instance, my instructor for this course has put me into Angela's group. And if I want to access that group, I can go ahead and click on this little link here and it'll take me right into the group. It'll also give you some recent feedback regarding any assignments that the instructor has posted. And also, uh, hopefully your homepage will look something similar to this, um, where you'll have a little brief introduction here regarding the course, um, some information on Canvas, some 10 easy steps, a training video, and some resources. And I'll click on that. So that you see. So this Canvas resources will take you to this page. This is where you can view a video for each of these topics, or there are specific questions that uh, you may have as a student that you need help on. So for instance, um, I have a question on how do I submit an online assignment. I can click on that. It'll take me to uh, the Canvas community student guide. And I can read over and it'll give me a little how to on how to submit an online assignment. And then each of these images is a link. So this will take you to your general uh, discussion question. So if you don't have access, it'll take you right into the discussions. So, um, you should have a um, course questions. It'll look something like this, where you can post a general uh, question regarding uh, the course, any questions on the syllabus, assignments, and so forth. This will take you to class resources. So any class resources that are specific to this course, you can click on it, 
and um, it will take you to a page with additional resources, but it's not set up for this one. Um, and then this one is your learning content. This will take you right into the modules right here, into that tab. And uh, we'll get to our modules in just a second. So that is um, the general features of a home page. Uh, the syllabus, if you click on the syllabus tab, again, hopefully you'll have something in your syllabus that looks similar to this. It uh, will give you some information regarding the instructor, uh, contact information, um, some general information about the course. And then right here, you should find a link to your syllabus. If you click on the down arrow, this will load it or upload it to your computer where you can um, view the file or you can print. Otherwise, the nice feature with Canvas is that if you click on these links, it will open up directly in Canvas. And then you can go ahead and read that file right in Canvas. It makes it into a nice PDF format. And then you have some tools up here. You can zoom in or out. You can go directly into a page if you choose to. So for instance, I want to go into page three right now. You just put in page three. And it should take you there, but it did not. But <laughs> That'll generally um, take you to where you need to go if you type it in. Um, also, if you want to view in full screen mode, you can click on this arrow right here and it'll take you into full screen mode. And once you are done reading this document, you can go ahead and minimize file preview. And this is the same for every file that is uh, linked in your Canvas course. You can just minimize and it'll shrink it back. This section down here is your course summary. So it will give you a summary of all of your graded um, assignments, which would be uh, assignments, quizzes, discussions, so forth, anything that's graded, and any tasks that you might um, have assigned to you but are not necessarily graded will also show up in your course summary. This date here is the date that it was uh, created by your faculty and put in the course. This section is the important one right here. This tells you what the due date is. So for instance, all of these assignments are due today at 12.59 AM. But generally, it'll give you the date and the time that it's due. And the nice thing with the due date, once your faculty uh, creates a due date for the assignment, it will populate it in your calendar, calendar here. So it'll color code it by course and then it'll um, show up in your calendar right here. So it's a nice little feature. Right now, it's not telling me I have anything, but it'll open up that calendar in this page. And the nice feature, again, here with this course summary is that it links it directly to the assignment or the quiz or, or the discussion um, in the course. So for instance, I have a, let's go into, project right here and it took me directly into the assignment page into that uh, particular assignment that I clicked on it'll show you any course or any assignment details in here your instructions um, it'll tell you what the status is so for instance this says that I've completed the assignment and that I have some feedback from the instructor this is where you would view that feedback um, I actually don't have any feedback on attempt one. Um, it'll also tell you if the assignment is missing or late, and then also what your score is for the assignment. So for instance, right now, I still have one attempt um, for this assignment. And if I want to, I can go ahead and try again. And then right here, you'll see this box. This is where your faculty will um, set the settings for how to submit the assignment. Right now, my options are text entry. I can upload a media file or just a file for my computer. We go to text entry, click on this box, start text entry. This is where you can type in or copy paste your um, assignment. Uh, 
generally I think a file upload would probably be a better idea than to type it in here but if that is um, a way that your um, instructor wants you to submit it by text entry um, it'll get the same editing features that you do in a Word document for instance if you click on here edit you can copy paste and cut if you go to insert you can insert um, links to URLs, you can upload an image, you can um, upload or record media directly in here, you can upload a document from your computer, you can insert equations, you can create a table, and formatting here, it'll give you the same formatting options that you would see in a Word document. And in this tools feature, it'll give you a word count. And then also this little plug right here are your apps. So if you've recorded a Panopto video, if you click on here, you're going to have to log into Panopto. And in this case, um, I would have to sign in and then it'll take me to my personal Panopto file. And then you can embed that Panopto video file in here. Now let's say that I have a YouTube video that I want to share with my faculty for my assignments. So let's say um, French onion soup. Uh, if you type that in there in the search part, it'll pop up um, a lot of different um, videos, YouTube videos for French onion soup. And let's say I want to embed this one. If you click on this blue button, you click embed. Canvas will directly embed that YouTube video right in your text box entry. And again, the toolbar here gives you the same features that you see up here. In this case, I don't want to do a text entry submission, so I'm going to click Cancel. Um, instead, I want to go ahead and upload my Word document. So you can either drag and drop your file from your um, computer file folder, or if you click on it, it will open up your file folder. I'm going to move that over for a second and then I will grab a file so that you see what it will look like. So let's say I have a PDF here and I am just going to drag and drop it right in here. And then once it's done uploading to Canvas, you'll see a message here saying that it's uploaded and it'll give you the name of the document that you uploaded. Now let's say I accidentally uploaded the wrong one. I can go ahead and trash it and start over again if I click on this button right here. So for now I'm good. I'm going to submit my assignment. So go to, over to the green box here and submit assignment. Okay, so for some reason it uploaded two documents in here and I'm going to trash this one. I don't want it. So I'm going to go ahead and click submit assignment and now it'll show me the document that I submitted into this assignment. So for instance here's my document and I can say okay this is good I uploaded the correct one. Um, if by chance you do get an additional attempt you can always try again if that is the incorrect um, file. Uh, that you uploaded. Otherwise, if you don't have that option, try again. I would um, contact your instructor and just let them know that um, you accidentally submitted the wrong assignment. And um, Okay, also it'll show you your due date. And right now this tells me that I have unlimited attempts and then I can always try again. Okay, so I'm good with this. Now um, let me go back into modules. And um, here is where you will see um, your, your course content. Um, it, so again, to the discretion of your faculty, how they choose to um, create the modules. It could either be by week, by unit, um, by topic. So that is something um, that may, you may see differently than what you're seeing here. So let's say I'm, I've got a lot of modules here and there's a lot of line items and I kind of really don't want to see everything and keep scrolling. I can go ahead and collapse, collapse all. And let's say I'm in week two 
and I only want to see what's going on in week two. So I click open that down arrow and it'll show me what I have for module two in here. So if you hover over these little icons, it'll tell you what it is. So for instance, this is a page, which is going to tell me that there's some information in here, some content. This will tell me that I have an assignment and uh, that it's another page. So let's go over here. This will tell me, this little rocket ship, that it's a quiz. And this will tell me that it is a discussion for the module. So if you hover over, it'll give you an idea of what is in that module and um, whether it's content or something that you actually need to do. So if we go into a page here, um, hopefully, again, you'll see something similar to this in your course where you have an introduction and objectives, learning material, activities, any optional videos for you to watch, so forth. Now, if I want to go to the next line item in that module, instead of going back into modules, I can go ahead and click Next right here. And it's going to tell me uh, when I hover over it where it's going to take me next. So, for instance, this is going to take me to the Week 1 Introductions um, item. In that module. If I hit uh, go to previous, it's going to tell me where I previously was or what the previous um, item is in the module. For um, this one, it is the getting started here module. So if I want to go to the next item in my module, I can just click the next button. So the next item, let me go back and show you right here. So week one, the next item was this week one introduction. So this is where it took me. If I click on here, it's going to take me to the same exact discussion question. Okay, so this box at the top, you're going to see your discussion um, posting for the week uh, that you have to respond to. Uh, when you respond to this uh, discussion, post your, when you want to post your original reply, you go ahead and click in this box right here. And this is where you're going to post your reply to the discussion question up here. And again, you're going to see those same editing features that we talked about earlier for this text box entry. Um, let's see. I'm just going to type in, I agree, which is not a great discussion post. But um, if I click post reply right here, it's going to put that discussion thread all the way at the end. So the most recent threads are going to be at the top. Um, and um, I'm sorry, the most recent ones are going to be towards the bottom. And you're older. So it's pretty much sort of like a first come, first serve kind of um, thread here. So Minnie Mouse was the first one to reply. Then was Angela Anderson. So a good way to view that is if you collapse those replies, you can see here. Um, so if you are kind of like trying to remember if you posted your original re reply to this discussion question, you can go ahead and collapse and then see down here, um, okay, I actually posted down here twice or three times, four times actually, um, to this discussion. So um, if you want to reply to a peer, so let's say um, down here, um, I want to reply to this discussion posting from um, Bonnie Mano right here. I go ahead and click on reply right here, and it's going to open up the text entry box. And then you can type in your response to your peer right here to their discussion. You just click post reply right here. So, this is a nice way of, or Canvas does a nice uh, job of organizing your discussion threads. Um, based on um, what the original reply to the discussion was. So it's kind of like a tiered um, view of the discussion uh, posts and responses. So for instance, you know, Minnie Mouse replied to the discussion forum here, and then Angela Anderson replied to Minnie Mouse. And you can see that in better detail here. So for instance, you know, this is Peg's original. She actually posted a video here, reply, and then Angela Anderson, and then Peg responded. So these are the threads to this discussion post here. And the little um, dots, I don't know if you noticed them earlier, but they kind of disappeared now because I just read. So if you haven't read a discussion, um, 
it'll uh, make the circle blue. So it'll tell me that I have not read this discussion I'm posting here. And you can also search if, if your discussion forum gets uh, quite um, lengthy. You can go ahead and search by either um, like the entry, something like a keyword, or by who wrote the, the um, discussion thread. And this will give you some information too. It'll tell you how many points um, the discussion is worth. And it'll also tell you when it's due right here. I'm going to go back into modules and then we're going to see what a quiz looks like. So for instance, I want to take this syllabus quiz. Uh, well, I already took this quiz. So um, if you have not taken the quiz, it'll look like this. So it'll go into the quiz. Actually, I take that back. It'll give you um, the general quiz information at the top. And um, this is where your timer is. It'll tell you how many how much time has elapsed. Um, and it'll tell you the due date. So in here, you'll have your question, uh, quiz question, and then here are the responses. This is a multiple choice, so I would just click on the circle. And it's going to tell me how many points each of these questions are worth also. And then, um, so let's see. Click on those, and this will tell you anything that's highlighted in green. Um, it means that you have answered those questions. So let me. So that I wish I had shown you before I submitted them, but um, anything that's not highlighted in green, it means that you have those questions unanswered. Um, you can always go to the question itself. So let's say I didn't answer question three. Um, so for instance, I didn't answer question three. It's not highlighted in green. I go to, it, if I click on it, it'll take me straight into question three. And then I can go ahead and respond to that question. And then when you're done, you can go ahead and submit quiz. So here, uh, um, again, general information on the quiz, when it's due, how many points it's worth, how many questions there are, if there's any time limits and how many attempts are allowed. So for instance, this quiz, I have unlimited attempts allowed for this quiz. Um, if you do not see allowed attempts, that means you only have one attempt at that quiz. This attempt history tells you what um, your attempts were, how many attempts you made, um, the time you took for that attempt, and what your score is for each of those attempts. And again, down here, it'll tell you um, obviously based on instructor discretion, whether they um, will allow you to view your incorrect um, responses or, or correct responses or any responses at all. You may not even see any of this information. Um, again, here it'll tell you your last attempt details, the time it took, what the score was, and then what the score that Canvas has kept in your grade book. So the, score that I kept was a 14 out of 20, which was this attempt right here, my first attempt. Again, if you have um, unlimited or a certain number of attempts, you can take the quiz again, and then you can also take it right here. Okay, so that is everything in modules. Uh, now we're gonna go into grades. So if you click on grades, this will tell you um, what all of your graded assignments are. It'll give you a, a list. And at the bottom, it'll give you, um, so for instance, if you have uh, weighted grades, this will give you an overview of, so for instance, um, my overall um, percentage in my tests are 23.33% on here. It'll give you some information like, for instance, if the quiz or assignment is late or if it's missing, it'll give you that information here too. It'll give you the score for each of these and um, it'll give you the, the total uh, points possible. 
So the nice thing about Canvas um, in this gradebook, so for instance, if I, let's see, in a quiz, I want to make sure that um, I'm getting a certain percentage um, for my quizzes. So I can go in here, click on this box. So let's say for quiz 12, um, I want to play around with these numbers and say if I got, you know, um, out of 20, let's say I got 19 correct and click on 19. Um, it'll tell you now, um, so for instance right here, it just bumped up my, my test percentage to 55%. So you can kind of play around with these numbers to see um, what the score you will need to bump up your, your overall um, weighted grade for the category. And then if you click on this, it'll take you back to your original score on here. Um, also, this will give you um, a general overview of what your weighted uh, categories are. Canvas also gives you um, the ability to print your grades if you would like to. You click on that button, you can either save it um, or print as an Adobe PDF, which will save it to your computer, or um, you can print to your printer. And it'll give you the exact same view and listing of what you see in the Canvas page. And lastly, you can arrange uh, the way you view the um, grade book items in here. You can, uh, if you click on this down arrow, it'll open up a menu. You can um, decide to uh, view them as an assignment group, um, by due date, by module, and it's that re um, and then title. So then you would have to click apply right here, and then it'll arrange it by title. So for instance, if I choose title, if I choose um, assignment group, it'll place everything according to the assignment group or categories in here. Um, so that is everything in the gradebook. If you have any questions or um, something that wasn't covered in this tutorial, you can always go into this help button here in the global navigation bar and then go to your uh, Canvas Guides for Students and it will open up the Canvas Community Student Guide. Uh, this is your table of contents, so if you click it open, uh, for instance, um, this will give you some information um, on additional topics and grades. And then um, if by chance you still have something that's going on in Canvas or you can't quite resolve through these student guides or in this tutorial, I would email your instructor. And also, here are some additional um, Canvas help information. You can always reach out to uh, University IT Support at 3class at rush.edu. You can also phone them. <clears throat> and this QR code right here will take you into the Canvas Live Help Chat. Um, they uh, This is not a 24-hour support chat, so um, you might have to uh, wait on that information once you type in your question, um, depending on what time of day. Um, that you are seeking help. So um, again, this is where you can get help. Um, refer to the help button in Canvas or IT support here. Uh, typically, IT support can help you with any like login issues or single sign-on issues. Um, and then also, if you reach out to your faculty, they know who to reach out to to answer your specific questions. So I would always make sure that you're reaching out to them. For assistance and I hope that you found this tutorial useful and I think that you're really going to enjoy Canvas and find it very useful user-friendly and intuitive to use at the student end.